Here's another attribute that's been defined to have a formula reference. It's the circumference of that tank. Now the tank's width was measured in meters right here. And we've calculated uh, the circumference and then expressed that as kilometers. So let's take a look at how we did this. First of all, the width is an attribute who, or that has a unit of measure of meters. And that's actually going to be very important as we look through this. Um, the unit of measure conversion relies on all of these unit of measures being set up properly. And you're going to notice as we look at this, there are many different unit of measures involved. So the input attribute here is measured in, a, is measured in meters. That's the unit of measure. If we look now at the formula data reference, we take a look at the formula itself. It's been defined to have a parameter that has been assigned a unit of measure of meters. Now that's actually a different setting than what we saw before. You can actually, if you want to, instruct AF to treat this as a different unit of measure than the default. You can either use the default, or you can, as you can see, you can use the default, or uh, there's the default right there, or you can explicitly specify how you want us to treat that uh, input. In this case, it's been specified to treat it as, a, as meters. We also have the calculation over here, it's pi times the diameter, basically. And that's being assigned a result of meters for the, uh, the end result. Now, having done all that, since we've taken this in meters, we've done the calculation in meters, we return the result in meters, the very last thing we do in the definition of the attribute that is the output attribute, that's where we affect the unit of measure change we specify this as a unit of measure kilometers. And that, in effect, changes this from 270 meters to 0.27 kilometers. I'll tell you, that, that's an awful lot of unit of measures involved in this little calculation. And I wouldn't blame you for being confused at this point. Uh, let, me, let me show you all the unit of measures involved here. First of all, and there's actually even one more than what we just described. First and foremost, there's the unit of measure defined when we do the data reference, uh, when we first create the data reference that retrieves the input attribute. So that's one that we didn't even look at in our previous example. See, I'm talking now not about the unit of measure right here, but if you recall from our discussion of uh, unit of measure, if you recall, if you actually look at the input settings for this pi data reference, we have yet another place where we can assign unit of measure. So. We're, we're instructing pi in this case, or AF, to retrieve this data from pi and treat that as the, the data that's coming in as meters. Okay. Now, when we configure this attribute, we also give that attribute a unit of measure. And that unit of measure we're also setting up as meters here. Now, if you did want to affect a conversion, you could actually change that to something else. And that would be you know, one level of conversion. You're retrieving it as meters, but then you're treating the attribute as a different unit of measure. And that's the second of the references. So the first unit of measure is, the, is in the data reference itself. The second is in the definition of the input attribute. That's where this right here, this is defined as the unit of measure. And that unit of measure is going to be, you know, it's, it's up to you what you choose to make it. Now in this example, we've just chosen meters all the way around. Okay. The third would be when you actually bring this input uh, attribute into the formula, at that point, you get to specify a, a unit of measure. So if you look at our, um, uh, this is our uh, shortcut here, identifying uh, the, what the formula is actually based on, we're seeing that A is defined as the width with a unit of measure of meters. So we specify the unit of measure in the input, we also specify the unit of measure on the result. So again, going back to our, um, to our shortcut here, we can see in the definition of that attribute, uh, we're specifying the result comes back as meters. And then lastly, the output attribute itself has yet another unit of measure. So there's, as you can see, there are a total of five different unit of measures involved here. There's when we retrieve the data from pi, when we set up the data reference, when we configure the input attribute, when we assign the formula parameter, 
that per, the first parameter in the formula, we get a, a unit of measure there. The result gets a unit of measure. And then once that result comes back to AF, we can have one last whack at it there and specify a unit of measure for the a output attribute. So taking a look at how this works here, let me show you a couple of ways we could have gone about this. Now, I'll warn you that this is flexible enough to produce things that get very confusing very fast. Uh, you know, it's very powerful uh, constru a construct here, but of course, you know, powerful also means fairly complicated to configure. Uh, I'm going to show you the recommendations we have if you want to do simple conversions. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just set this back, set this back to meters so that we're doing no convert, no conversion at all. And let's look at the basic. I'll check this in. Let's look at the basic calculation. So here's the basic calculation. It's the uh, the calculation you see right here, which is pi times the diameter. So pi is around 3.14, 96 times 3.14, it's around 262. Straightforward calculation, everything involved, all five of them are meters. Let's go through those five again. Now I just refresh my screen so that we can see fresh numbers here. And let's just do the simplest thing that we saw earlier, which is if I, if I simply want to convert on the very last stage to kilometers, I can simply go in here and on my output attribute, change that from meters to kilometers. And that's very simple. I'll go ahead and check this in. Now we're doing the conversion. Now this is measured in kilometers, not in meters. Now I'm going to change this back. And let's take a look at how we would do this if we had the need to do this from within the formula. So I check this back in. Now everything's at meters again. See, the, the, the point here is I'd like to go in and actually modify this so that within the context of this calculation, we're treating this as meters. And you might need to do that sometime because, as I said, sometimes your, your data in Pi is not in the measurements that it needs to be for the calculation that you'd like to use. So if that's the case, we'll go into editing that. Uh, first of all, we can leave the input unit of measure alone. We're treating that as meters, no problem. We're not going to affect it on that end. Although we could, it's, you know, it's not what I want to do because I still want to display this in the original. But within the calculation, I'd like to adjust how we retrieve that data in the calculation. So I'll go into the calculation definition. And for the uh, input parameter, in instead of using this as meters or choosing this to, uh, to be expressed as meters, we'll switch this over to kilometers. So at this point now, we do that conversion immediately as we retrieve this value into the calculation. So within my expression here now, A is going to be treated as kilometers. Now I also want to express the output as kilometers as well. If I evaluate this, you can see this is now being expressed as kilometers. But if you take a look at our results, our results don't show kilometers yet. And the reason for that is because we still have the output attribute set at meters. So it's actually doing a conversion back to meters. I want to finalize this by setting this to kilometers as well. I'll go ahead and check everything in. And we're now expressing the result in kilometers instead of meters. So three things here. The, the input tags, or this input parameter, the unit of measure is now kilometer. The uh, calculation result, unit of measure is kilometer. And then the attribute as defined in here, this circumference attribute, is specified to show kilometers. So you may look at this and say, this isn't much different than what we saw before. Didn't you just change the output to kilometers before and you didn't have to do any of the other stuff? Well, yes, but what I've accomplished by doing this is now within the context of this equation, I'm treating this as kilometers. That doesn't make much of a difference in the case of this calculation because it's just a constant pi times the diameter. But if you have, uh, you know, if you were using uh, some uh, heat transfer coefficient calculation or something in which you really needed something to be expressed in a certain engineering unit. Then of course this would be very useful because you can use the equation that you've got and you can do the uh, unit of measure conversion automatically. Now I will warn you that it is a very flexible system. It's very powerful in that you can change these just about in any way you want. We didn't put any restrictions on here because, you know, frankly over the years we found customers doing things with our calculations that we would have never thought of. So, um, you know, if you, if you do have a need to uh, 
uh, force the output to go to some other unit of measure, you can do that, I including things that don't make any sense. So for example, if I treat the incoming value as kilometers, treat the outgoing value, basically assign the outgoing value to meters, as you can see, you're going to get stuff that really doesn't fit your purposes. And it's pretty easy to get confused, uh, you know, mighty quick with all these different unit of measures flying around, especially with the, with the five of them, as I just mentioned. But um, anyway, that what, what I'm suggesting that you start with anyway is you can uh, simply use the exact same unit of measure for every, uh, every place in this, you know, in this structure here. And then in the very last section here in the output, that's where you can do your conversion if you don't need to do the conversion earlier for the sake of your calculation. And if you do need to do that in the, for the sake of your calculation, as I've done here, then uh, leave the inputs alone on the, excuse me, leave the input attribute alone, you know, allow that to come in as its native form, but then in the calculation, it's at that point that you make the conversion. And then use that, export it as the value that you want, and then make sure you display it as the value you want. Well, if you get all this and it's no problem, then you can stop the video right now. But for, uh, for, for just the sake of, uh, of completing the loop here, let's try one more time. Let's do a conversion of an existing calculation uh, in which we're going to convert this from Celsius to Fahrenheit in the, um, in the, the display portion. So whatever, what are, are our choices here? Well, we've got these two inputs. They're in Celsius. If you look at our calculation itself, we're retrieving these calculations in Celsius. We're outputting in Celsius. So how can we convert this to Fahrenheit? Well, real simple. If I simply take the output attribute right here, this result attribute, I can make the calculation at this point right here. And I'll go down here and choose degree Fahrenheit. So since in the very last, I'll go ahead and check this in and take a look at what happens to the differential. Now we're looking at the result coming back in Fahrenheit. Was there another way we could have done this? Well, yes. If we had the need to actually treat the calculation, you know, within the calculation, treat this as Fahrenheit, no problem. Let's just do the calculation on this end. I'm going to specify my inputs are Fahrenheit, both of my inputs. As you can see, if you get this wrong, you can produce some garbage mighty quick. And uh, yeah, and then I'll specify my output to be Fahrenheit as well. You know what they say with a with a chainsaw, you can cut down a tree, but you can also cut off your leg. And and I would say the same for unit of measure. If you start, you know, messing around in here without knowing what you're doing, you could easily produce some garbage. It looks pretty ugly. So yeah, there we go. Now we're looking at this as Fahrenheit. Uh, we did specify we want to see that as Fahrenheit. Yeah, and we're treating this within the context as Fahrenheit. Uh, 